welcome back to another video. Today's video is another one in the series of exercise and fibromyalgia. And as we saw in the previous videos, exercise and physical activity have a lot of benefits and are a scientifically proven way to improve our quality of life. But it is also quite difficult for us to do it. So today we are looking at how to get started. We need to start off slow and progress very gradually in intensity, frequency, and duration in order to see results without hurting ourselves or inducing flares. If you feel like you're exercising too hard, you probably are. Like I mentioned in my first video, it's a good idea to start becoming more active in our daily lives before we attempt exercise. Some suggestions are doing some housework, taking small walks, and gentle stretches. It's also a really good idea to split these active periods of our day into small chunks throughout so that we are not tempted into overexertion. Do a few minutes of activity, such as hanging up your laundry, then go and do something non-active, and keep trying to do small chunks of activity in between large chunks of rest or non-physically active periods. For example, I work from home, so I will work at my desk for a few hours and then do some housework and then work at my desk again for a few hours, and I split it throughout the day so that I'm not sitting for too long, but I'm also not doing things for too long. Ideally, we will have a total of 30 active minutes a day, but you can reach this total with even a few minutes or one minute at a time. Whatever your fitness capacity, your activity should be at a level that gives you a slight sense of exertion. Like I mentioned in my previous video, we all have different levels of fitness, and so the exact amount of, of exertion will vary. But a good general rule is that we should exert moderate effort for a few minutes on a regular basis. Doing exercise in extreme moderation, which is what we need, could mean doing as little as two minutes of yoga every day. As you get into better shape, you might be able to hand up a 10 minute walk or a a 20 minute swim, but slow and steady means consistent. If all you can do is two minutes, try to be consistent about your two minutes. It's much better to do two minutes every day than do 30 minutes and then not be able to move for the next month. If you're consistent about your two minutes, eventually you'll be able to handle four and so on, and any activity is better than no activity. Another good idea is to keep track of your activity and progress in a journal or an app while you can set goals for each week or day to help you see your progress and notice your difficulties. So here are a few ideas of things to keep in mind and keep track of. Set your sights on starting small and then make incremental increases weekly, every other week, or even every month. Consistency is more important than intensity. So just for a little reference, it takes a normal person about two to three weeks to begin to improve their fitness level, then about six weeks to three months to to feel a significant difference and then it takes two days of inactivity to start losing said progress and then two weeks of complete inactivity to lose most of the benefits that you gained. So it's really important to be consistent rather than really really intense. Note at the time of day that you feel your best or more energetic and then try to increase your activity level at this period of the day. Keep track of each day you exercise or of your active minutes and see if there are any behaviors or habits that are making you more or less active. Keep record of how a specific activity or exercise makes you feel for about two, three days afterwards and or more if you feel the need to see if it's sustainable and healthy for your current pain and fitness levels. Keep track of your mood, symptoms, self-care habits, water and food intake, and daily activities to try and see correlations between exercise and activity and your current lifestyle to possibly spot negative things you are doing in your life that are hindering you and then try, try to fix them or to see if there are any things that you would like to change. And lastly, honor the two hour rule. So if you are still in pain, not soreness, okay, pain, after two hours post exercise, you overdid it and you should decrease your intensity next time that you do that specific exercise. Being sore and tired the next day is perfectly normal, but being in pain means that you did too much. Another crucial point of getting started is learning how you are using your muscles. It's important to modify our old exercise habits and build new ones that accommodate our illness better. When you use a muscle, it contracts. Contracting and shortening a muscle will usually be well tolerated, but contracting and lengthening a muscle at the same time, called eccentric contraction, will definitely increase your chances of muscle soreness. This soreness doesn't occur right away, but you will feel it the day after and possibly up to five or more days after you exercise. So becoming aware of eccentric work and learning to minimize it could be helpful. You shouldn't totally eliminate this type of work, but you can reduce the amount of minutes that you continue to do it. And here are a few examples of eccentric work. Overhead motions like drying your hair, putting things into a cupboard, vacuuming, mopping, 
cooking and making beds, gardening with flower beds that are for in front of you, putting dishes into a dishwasher, and walking down steps or downhill. But becoming aware of what muscles you are using is always a good idea. So a good way to start being more active before you start to exercise is going on walks. It's really tempting to power walk and be very ambitious with your goals, but I suggest that you start off really slow. If you're constantly flaring and you are in a flare right now, maybe try to be active, but as slow and as little as you possibly can at first, just to start to get your body used to moving. Last year, I could barely walk, but still every day I would try to walk at least the length of my apartment, which is about 50 meters, just to keep me moving. Eventually I started going down to the square outside of my house and just walking to the other side and back, sometimes even sitting down in the park benches uh, to rest before I could get back home. And this would take me sometimes like half an hour to cover this distance that now takes me two minutes. And very slowly, I started to increase the perimeter and the distance that I would go for how long and at which intensity. Obviously, whatever you choose as your activity or activities, it's important that it's something that you actually like and enjoy doing because this will help you stay motivated. A very important part of our workout routines should be stretching. Now, I know that people say stretching and immediately in our minds, we think of like difficult positions and putting a leg behind our back and really intense stuff, but it doesn't have to be that way. But stretching will really help you improve your ability to use your muscles. It is important that you don't stretch too far as this could cause a reflex contraction and cause you more pain. Whatever way you begin, and even when you're already regularly doing activities, it's absolutely vital that you take it day by day and make sure that you are not overdoing it. Even if you can already do a 30 minute walk most of the time, there will still be days where you won't have the energy or you'll be in pain. And on those days, it's important to adjust your workout to the level of pain you are feeling and just how your body is reacting generally. However, it's really important that you avoid the pitfall of trying to make up for lost time on days when you do feel good. Your mindset is also a very important part of this process. You will absolutely be in more pain and you will absolutely have a flare or two, maybe more, before you start feeling improvement in your symptoms, but you have to keep in mind that you are investing in your future. It takes time to figure out how much is too much for you and sometimes that amount is different from day to day, so it's important that you learn to do this but you have to be active in order to learn this and once you start to figure this out and you start to understand your body better yes you will have a few flares yes you will be in a little bit more pain at first but with time it will get better exercising will only help if you do it consistently over a long period of time. And so the idea of feeling immediate benefits is kind of crazy to me. But for me, it's just kind of important to forget about immediate benefits and really just focus on how doing this today and being in pain for a few days after is going to help me in the future be more active and be healthier. It has been said that a downward spiral to deconditioning starts with pain and ends with pain. Any attempt to avoid pain by being inactive will eventually lead to more pain upon exertion, beyond whatever your chronic pain would normally be. We will sometimes hurt during or after exercise, but we just have to accept that reality because like I said, it will get better with the consistency of activity. I've spent a lot of days resting in order to increase my physical activity. But as time has gone on, I noticed that it takes me less time to recover and that I feel more energetic in general and that I am sleeping better than I used to. But none of these things happened overnight. It took me nine months before I felt ready to start exercising. At the beginning of those nine months, I could barely walk. So during this time, I slowly, slowly increased my capacity for walking. So I almost exclusively went on walks and started becoming more active in my house by doing housework with the goal of starting water aerobics once a week. So now I do that and I do small daily walks and keep active in my daily life with housework. In my opinion, a huge portion of becoming more active is anticipatory education. Understanding our bodies as well as having guidance and recommendations for rescue treatments are vital in helping us cope with and manage the symptom flares that may occur as we become more physically active. It is often recommended that we take a pain reliever before or after exercise, especially in the initial stages, to help decrease or prevent severe 
severe post-exercise pain. It is also suggested that we use pedometers or fitness trackers to monitor our daily step count and physical activity because self-monitoring helps a lot of people stay focused on reaching their daily goals and it can also be an extra motivator. Also, for some of us, having a more visual demonstration of our physical activity can also be helpful. Not to mention that a fitness tracker or a smartwatch that monitors your heart rate will come in super handy to stay within the safe zones of exertion so you can actually burn calories and do cardio without inducing a flare. If you would like to know more about my smartwatch specifically and why I chose it, I have a video on that as well on my channel. And last but not least, here are a few ways to keep motivated. Recruit a friend family member or spouse to exercise with you because accountability can be a very powerful motivator not to mention they may be able to assist you if anything goes wrong or they may be able to help you slow down and not use all your energy in one go if you are if you are being too energetic or you know they might be, be able to keep you to help you keep that in check. Set small goals for yourself, but also celebrate them actively. Set aside a regular time to exercise or to have your active minutes. Waiting to find the time normally results in us not doing it. A hot shower or bath before exercising may be helpful with the stiffness. Wear shoes and clothes that are comfortable, but you also feel good in them because this will help with your confidence. Consider alternating between two different activities or more so that you have a little bit of variety and don't get bored. Check out Coco Lime Fitness. They have workouts specifically for people with fibromyalgia and other chronic fatigue and other illnesses of, the, of that sort. And they also share tips and inspirational stories. Stop before you get too tired. Holding back a little means that you can break or prevent the cycles of exertion, flares, and recovery. Keep your heart rate at around 50 to 60% faster than normal. This will be a little bit over your resting heart rate, but not enough to trigger a flare. I'll also be making a video about this specifically later on in the series. Treat yourself properly when you do achieve a goal and even along the way. To give you a reward and keep you motivated, seen as the ultimate goal of achieving physical activity and physical fitness uh, may take many months to achieve. Share your experience and get involved with the community. Not only will there be others who may inspire you and possibly motivate you to keep going or have helpful tips for anything that you're going through, but your experience could also be inspiring to other people, even the setbacks. Seeing other people have setbacks helps us remember that we are human too and that these setbacks will also happen to us, but that just like we didn't think anything bad of that person, who had a setback. No one is thinking that about us either, and least of all, we shouldn't be thinking about that about ourselves. The most important thing by far is to just start with something small and be very patient and give yourself lots of time to recover and rest afterwards. You will get better at it, but it won't be as fast as it used to be, and you just have to be very, very, very patient. Keep in mind that not pacing yourself will actually slow you down in the long run and in the the present too. The key is not pushing yourself too hard too fast and expecting setbacks along the way. Other things that are really important in getting started is to take lots of breaks, be very very gentle with yourself, be very forgiving, make sure you're keeping up with your self-care, and make sure you're drinking lots and lots of water. It makes a huge difference if you're well hydrated. You will be able to fight the fatigue better. Be really patient but really intentional and really aware of what you're doing. It took me nine months of preparing to start to exercise. I thought, no, I'd rather do this slow and take my time but do it in a sustainable way so I'm not always inducing flares rather than jump into it and hurt myself because I was very, very scared that I would hurt myself because I was so used to exercising so intensely that I knew that my that was my instinct. I would have done it that way. So I needed to relearn my body, to just understand my body better before I started doing something so intense as exercise. And I'm very happy that I did it that way. At the beginning, it was very, very, very slow. I only increased my goals every like few weeks because I was very aware that I have to do it very slow and I'd rather take longer but not have that many setbacks than try to do it really fast. It does take a long time to see progress because you are doing it so slowly 
but as long as you're not seeing flares, I feel like that's already progress. But I definitely think that if I had done it straight away, I would have hurt myself and I, I would have created an aversion to exercise and that would have been a really bad idea. So I think a lot of us do do that because our doctors tell us to exercise and we think, okay, I have to go exercise. And we do it the way we used to do it or the way normal people do it. And then we hurt ourselves and then we're always in pain and we don't understand why. And we think exercise doesn't work for us. And what doesn't work for us is doing things like normal people do. If you can't do every uh, everything else like uh, regular people, why would exercise be any different, you know? Yeah, that is, that's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helps a little bit. Next week, we're gonna be talking about the best kinds of exercise for us and the benefits of each different thing. But I definitely think that even if you don't feel like exercise is it for you, just trying to be more active in your life will help you. So I'm gonna do videos on the best kind of exercise, the heart rate thing. Uh, we're gonna talk about you know what kind of movements and what kind of stretches we can do. I just wanna make it very visual and very practical a uh, few videos about what does that what does it mean to actually move slowly and to actually gently exercise and gently move and gently stretch without pushing ourselves too hard because I feel like the majority of even yoga videos for, for beginners might be too much for, for people with our condition. Let me know if you have any questions or any things that you want to me to talk about specifically in this series. And yeah, just leave me your comments like always. And if you haven't already, you can consider subscribing to my channel. I talk almost exclusively about fibromyalgia and just about my life a little bit, but always there is always the fibro lens because if you have it, you can't not see through that lens. And you can also consider becoming a member on Patreon because it would really help me out and you get a few extra perks that nobody else gets. And that is all of the things that I have to say. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!